my story is, is I, uh, I don't have regrets. You know, my life, the way my life played out is the way it, I was, I see it as destiny, you know. I don't, I don't have regrets on anything. Even if I was, did things wrong, it was meant to be. I, but I try to learn from those mistakes I made. For me, I think what really triggered me into violence and gangs was discrimination. I remember that when I was very young, I mean, all the way from uh, kindergarten to first or second grade, uh, always being picked on. Not knowing how to read very well, it seemed like even the teacher would do it on purpose. You know, oh, uh, we're gonna have someone come up and read. And I'm like, oh my God, I know she's gonna pick me, sure enough. You know, just, and then the kids would laugh naturally because you couldn't pronounce words correctly. And that's another thing. My mom never wanted us to learn Spanish. So they would always speak English. And even my grandmother, they'd always say, teach the kids English because they're going to be teased all their lives, you know. So English was our primary language. But sometimes we couldn't even pronounce words correctly because we're in between languages, you know. You're kind of, kind of confusing. So you wouldn't pronounce clear English. And then again, you would get teased. As a child, I remember my mom and dad would work. My grandmother would be there, you know, she would take us to school or, or clean up the house, and I would be under the bed hiding. You know, I, I did that for years, I would hide. And through the whole, I think, elementary school, I remember I had straight Fs, never. I don't know how I passed, but they would pass me. You know, I had straight Fs. And that, after so many years of that, anger set in. You know, being teased, always uh, be, uh, feeling different, so when anger set in, that triggered a different person. That's when I became uh, a troubled child, fighting back, rebelling. When someone would tell me something, I'd punch them at them or, or fight, you know. And uh, I started getting thrown out of the school system, started going to the juvenile halls. And I think when I made the juvenile hall system, that's when I found my true belonging to me, I thought at the time, of who I am, you know. I go, if this is what I'm going to be, then this is who I am, you know, because there were people like me in there. There, there were all, we all had problems, you know, problem kids and stuff. But I, I got to go to school in there. I learned, I learned how to read from, a juvenile, from the juvenile system. And uh, when it came to getting released and I would go to court, I would tell the judge I didn't want to go home. I wanted to stay in there. And, you know, and they would look at me like, this guy wants to stay here? I go, I actually did. Because they were like my, those were like my brothers there now. You know what I mean? I, I, kinda, I had a bond with these guys, you know. They were my new family. And I was slowly getting into the system where you don't come out type thing, you know. And you start, people start graduating to the prison system. That's how it starts is because you just, uh, you get so tied into it. And it's the respect that you get, you know? It's not, we, we don't ask for respect, we demand respect. And that's what feeds you, you know? And once you start getting respect from people, you start feeling like something and you belong to something. And that's how you get sucked into this vacuum, which is uh, the prison system that we live in today.